Welcome to Jewish Life, a program presented in cooperation with the Jewish Community Relations Council of New York. I'm your host, Stuart Ain. Every week we present programs of particular interest to the Jewish community, and today we're going to be speaking about Witness Theater, presentation of Self Helps Holocaust Survivor Program. And with me are three students and two survivors, and also from uh, Self Help is Eve Yudetsky who is going to explain, she's the program director of Witness Theater. Uh, good, e good, good evening, everybody. And uh, uh, Eve, maybe you can start off by telling us a little bit about what Witness Theater is. Sure, thank you so much for having us, Stuart. Um, so Witness Theater was actually started in Israel by Irit and Ezra Dagan, um, and then was expanded by JDC Eshel. It's been in over 50 municipalities there. Self-Help brought the program to New York in 2012. And so for the past eight years with ongoing major support from UJ Federation of New York, we've been able to continue and expand the program. We've had over a hundred participants, a uh, hundred survivor participants and over 200 student participants over the last eight years and thousands and thousands of audience members. Um, just briefly about the program, Witness Theater um, is a, an intergenerational program that brings together a small group of Holocaust survivors and high school students. Um, they meet over the course of an academic year once a week under the guidance of a drama therapist. Um, they get to know each other very well and the survivors share their stories and the drama therapist then turns those stories and other themes that have come up in the group uh, into a play which is performed by the students and the survivors together um, at the end of the program year for the public. Um, and, you know, of course, this year because of the pandemic, we were stopped about six weeks out from our live performance. And this group had to uh, instead create a video through Zoom. Um, which was pretty incredible. Uh, also, the, the, um, the participants who are with us this evening um, are members of a group that we were very excited this year, thanks to uh, Jewish Federations of North America, to be able to bring together a group which included students that were both non-Jewish and Jewish. Historically, over the last eight years, we've mostly worked with Jewish schools and therefore Jewish students. Um, and this is was particularly important to us to be able to create this, um, you know, to open a dialogue across generations and also across cultures, um, you know, especially in light of the rising anti-Semitism and the pervasive ongoing social injustice, you know, that that is going on in the world. Um, right. So this is, sorry. And that, was, and, and that was funded by the Jewish Federation of North, North America, this particular part, am I right? Yes, correct. Yes. So they've seen that, is this a national program or is it still just local here in New York? Um, so self-helps program is just in New York. We've had it, you know, throughout the metropolitan area. We've had a group in Westchester, in Long Island, um, Manhattan, Brooklyn, uh, and next year, hopefully Queens. Um, but but I do believe that people in other parts of the country have been in touch with the founders in Israel to do the program in other places. I think there was a modified version done in Florida at one point. Um, and I think Minnesota, Minneapolis at one point. Right, well, there are about 36,000 36, survivors in New York area and uh, something like, what, 80,000 uh, in the country, uh, but many more in Israel. And so this right. would be an excellent program for Israel to do. 
And, but they haven't started yet, huh? No, they, it was started in Israel. It is. It yeah. was. Okay. It, okay. We brought it from Israel. Brought it from yeah. Israel. And they've done a lot? Yes. They yeah. They got it. You now, know, to my knowledge, in at least over 50 municipalities in Israel. That's great. That's yeah. great. And what, I, I guess, let me just ask uh, some of the students, uh, Raffaella, what, what did you learn from this? Well, so much. I think I can't put it all in words because I think for us students to meet Holocaust survivors just brings, it brings us way more understanding than hearing it in school from our teachers trying to teach us. But when we have these awesome relationships with the survivors, we connect in a way deeper level and we'll always for me, I can say that we'll always uh, carry these stories in our hearts and pass them on because it's such an important topic. Right. Now, you you have German ancestry. Yes. Yeah, so talk to, to me about that. What, what did your parents think? What did your grandparents think? <laughs> um, my mom's a pastor, and she she works in interreligious, uh, in an inter how's it called? Right. Yeah, Seven, she, right. yeah uh, so she was really happy that I found this and participated. And my grandparents as well. Um, yeah. Because Did you hear anybody who, who was negative about it? No. 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 Anybody hear anything negative about it? No. Well, Olivia, what, what, um, what, what inspired you to, to, uh, to join this program? Yeah, so initially for me, um, I've been doing like performing and acting for a long, long while of my life. So this, that's what kind of um, brought me here in the first place. But then I, I happily say that I stayed for the relationships and the, everything that I've learned throughout the entire program. It's definitely a lot more than the performance at the end of uh, the program. It's definitely about building the relationships, hearing the stories, um, gaining so much knowledge from each other. There's so much to learn here. And Raphael is right. Like there's a lot that we know in our classrooms, but we don't, never get that personal connection to it. So I think this is very important to be a part of, to get that personal connection and just carry that with you from, you know, from now on. Cordelia, what did you, what, what's most memorable about this program for you? Um. I, I would add on to Olivia saying that it was extraordinary, the relationships we were able to bond, you know, intergenerationally, it was incredible. Um, I think that the program really, it just was a constant reminder of how incredibly important it is um, for, for people to be able to tell their stories and to be, to know that they are being heard um, and I think that goes for everyone because, you know, we, we get, came into the room and it, you know, um, we talked about this a lot about who it, what, who it was actually um, therapeutic for. And I think it was for everyone because it's really, it's, it's takes a really um, committed and engaged group of people to sit there and listen to tons of stories and then take those in and, um, and, and just and just sit there because it's so hard to listen to stories and then and and validate the person through your listening and that's like I think that's overlooked a lot um, so that is that is the big thing I got out of this and just the constant reminder it's so important to listen and and give people that gift. Good. Samuel Martin, um, were you comfortable talking about your story? Me? No, Sam. <laughs> Yes, I was comfortable doing my story. Um, actually, I have been talking uh, quite a lot in schools. And uh, the, I noticed that the results were extremely positive. And when I saw that, I mean, I spoke even in places like Iowa, in Kentucky, and the University of Kentucky, and then uh, in Iowa, where there was no Jewish person present. And people came over to me and thanked me for coming. And I realized that what I'm doing was probably one of the most important things I will ever do in my life, or I ever did in my life. When did you start and talking about it? When? Yes. About How far 
about 50 years after it happened. 50 years after it happened. Yes, I did not want to talk about it before. I did not want to think about it before. And then I realized how important it is. And when the uh, opportunity came to talk, uh, to be in touch with people from, from the um, um, theater, uh, I decided to join it. And then I discovered that I reached people on a deeper level even then I could reach the thousands of others that I spoke to in schools because I got to know the students. And I feel that I benefited by it just as much as the students did. It gave me a tremendous feeling of optimism when I met those wonderful young people for whom I have my highest respect as human beings. And uh, it, uh, it really uh, convinced me that the more that this is done, the more useful it would be for many, many more people that get in touch with this program. So I cannot talk enough about the positive aspects of this undertaking. Monty, uh, have you been talking about this for a long time? No, I'm, uh, I have not. I just uh, recently found out about the program and I was asked if I would be interested. And I said yes, and I was very happy that, it, that I was able to do it. But uh, my experience was kind of different than all the others because we left Germany before before it got really bad, we left in 39. So were you were there for Kristallnacht? Yes, we were there for Kristallnacht. And yes. were you, where were you in, at that time? We were in a small town in southern Germany, in Bavaria. And... Um, were you impacted by the uh, Kristallnacht or didn't it come to you? No, well, we, Directly, I was not because we were actually, my father was in the small town, but we already had gone to Munich because we couldn't go to school anymore in the small town. So my mother took us to Munich to go to Jewish school. So we just heard about it the next day. You heard about it, right. Yeah, right. when my father disappeared. And they, and they, they arrested him? They came to us. Pardon me? The SS. Oh. What, I'm sorry, what happened with your father? Oh, they, they put him in prison for three weeks and then they let him go with yes. the provision that we would leave Germany as soon as possible. And were you able to get out? Yes, we were very lucky that way too because my mother had gotten a visa application a couple of years before that. And you and left? Then, you left? We left in right 38, 38, we went to, uh, no, 39. We went to London for a year until yes. I caught up and then we went to the, again, the States. Right. And Sema, were you, were you uh, in Europe during the, during the Holocaust? Yes. Uh, I was in a concentration camp in the Ukraine for three and a half years. Right, right, right. And what was it like telling your story to, to the kids? Uh, what was it? Was it, was it, was it? Yes, I understand your question. Um, it, uh, my talks were actually, I sort of uh, resigned, uh, reassigned the subject or changed the subject. I changed it into, into, um, um, not, not, I did not want to talk so much about myself, so I talked about prejudice and its consequences. Ah. Once I did that, I realized that I, I have them on my side because there is no such person in this world that does not experience prejudices of one kind or another. And I also explained to them that I'm coming on my own. 
because I feel that I would not want them to live the kind of life that I live. And so uh, they became friends. Right. I'm wondering, Raffaella, did, did you talk about this with uh, other relatives, friends? Um, did you share his stories or these stories with anybody else other than the program? Yeah. Yeah, I talked about it with my classmates in school a lot. And they were impressed that I participate in this program because it does take something to to participate all the whole year and stay in contact now also with you uh, survivors. Um, yeah, so they were amazed by it. Well, how old are you? I'm 16. And so before you met, um, you, you worked with Sam, 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 was that right? Who did you work with? Which survivors? Yes, she worked with me. Also. Okay, right. So did you, how much of the, uh, of the story about the Holocaust did you know before you started this program? Of Sam's story? About the story of the Holocaust, just oh, the, the Holocaust in general. Oh yeah, I knew a lot about it. I mean, we study it in school, so. You study it in school, in New York City schools? Uh, I go to the German school in White Plains. Uh-huh. And they talk about it a lot. Uh, Olivia, which school do you go to? Um, I just graduated from Middletown High School South in Middletown, New Jersey. Do they talk about the Holocaust a lot? Yes, they do. That's they like do. most of our junior year curriculum. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and Cordelia, did they talk about the Holocaust in school? Yes, I've, I've gone to many different schools, um, but yeah, I've had great um, history and history education. Yeah. Right. I've definitely learned more. I think, I think with everything you can learn much more. And so I would love to learn more, but I think I'm on the right track. <laughs> right. Um, did you see any of the movies or or read in any of the books uh, of the Holocaust? Are you talking to me? Or yeah, did, sure. Oh, um, yeah, I think, um, I'm trying to remember um, some of you. Schindler's List? I haven't watched that yet, I really want to. Um, I, I think it's hard because, because it's a movie and I've had like, I had very little time throughout school, um, but I, we, within school we did watch a lot of movies. Um, I'm trying to think of what the name was. There was, oh shoot. It was one with a piano. Um, it was when I was really young, so I'm trying to remember it. And I was also very okay. disturbed so I'm trying to pull it out of my brain. Okay. Right, right. Ra Ra Raffaella, do you remember any, any stories? Uh, yeah, Movies? Like the Boy in the Striped Pajamas. We were in uh -huh. the school. Right, right. Olivia, do you remember any movies that struck you? Yeah, in school, we uh, we spent a lot of time uh, watching Schindler's List, the movie, and then after we did oh. uh, research projects on particular people within the movie, so we can know like their real life uh, story after. So that was a really, really touching project. And that at the same time I was doing that was when I first learned about Witness Theater from the year before his performance. So it was, it you know, it all kind of worked out for me to then bring me here. Yeah. Right. Lottie, what, what is... Um... Is this an inspiring program for you, this Witness Theater? Whom are you talking to? to you, yes, Lottie. Yes, it, it was very inspiring because it, I realized how important it is to talk to the young people and how wonderful they were and, and how understanding they are. And hopefully they will be able to carry on our stories in the future. Have you been able to talk to your own children and grandchildren about it? Uh, not really. They don't seem to be interested. I mean, I don't have any children, but I have a lot of relatives. And they're not, somehow or other, I can't get them that interested. It's weird. Wow. Wow. Uh, Sam, uh, how about you? As you just, as you said, you just started talking a few years ago about this. But, yes. Um, 
have you been able to talk to your kids about it, grandchildren? Well, I have no children, and um, I uh, devoted most of my early life when I came to the States to, to catch up with my music profession, rather to get into the music profession, because I have no background. And so I, uh, I was just very busy establishing myself in the music, in the, in, in the art, uh, in the arts. And uh, the, I did not want to think about it until I was asked one time to talk about the Holocaust. And then I got my shock. I did not remember one of the most important things that happened to me that made me stay alive. And when I was asked to talk about it, I was thinking about it and said to myself, well, I have nothing to say. And all of a sudden it shocked me that I did not remember the most important thing in my life. And uh, from then on, I decided that I better begin doing something. So I wrote a book first, and then I started talking about it. Right. You had blanked it out. Right, correct. The whole experience. The whole experience. Wow. 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 Um, how about relatives? Did you have relatives here or not really? I have relatives. Uh, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, it was at the time, in the early time, no one wanted to hear and nobody wanted to talk about it until it became sort of fashionable. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and then I woke, I had to wake up myself to the reality of not having done anything about reviving the stories. Yeah. Um, do, do, let me ask you, uh, Raphael, how important it is, do you think uh, that young people know about what happened. It's really important because I think the young generation, it's, it's our job to not let anything like that happen again. And if we hear the stories from the survivors or from people who talk to the survivors and know their stories, um, we will, we, I think some, some kids have problems understanding that this actually happened. And if they hear the stories, they will understand that it did happen and they won't want anyone to have to go through this. So it's, it's our, it's our um, job to make sure that this won't happen again. And that's why it's really important. Olivia, what do you think? Yeah, I could not agree more. The more you know about a topic, the more you're going to want to spread that knowledge and educate yourself more. And the more educated you are about things, the less likely they're going to happen again, specifically about Holocaust. And then now like the social injustice is happening. It's just the more educated you are on a topic, the less likely it is for it to happen again in such a impactful way. Right. Did you share with your friends? Yeah, for sure. Um, again, like my biggest thing drawn into this project was the theater aspect. So all of my right. theater friends that are interested in performing, they loved hearing about the stories. They loved watching the final product. So definitely made an impact in my little circle. What, you, what about your folks? My parents are absolutely so pleased with the, uh, the program and then the performance itself. They absolutely loved it. Right. And Cordelia, what, what, what is most striking uh, about this program for you, about what you've learned uh, during this. This is a one-year program. So what, what did you, if I just ask you to, on one, on one standing on one foot. Um, wow, that's a big question. Um, I learned a lot. I think with every really powerful thing in life, you learn a lot. Um, I think I kind of already answered it in the sense that I, I came into this program because I really, I wanted to think about how, like Sam was saying, how prejudice, kind of unpack prejudice a little bit and how it's affected people, you know, because, um, and objectification, like when you objectify someone, you separate them from their humanity completely. And that's, I, I really wanted to think about that because 
like Sam said, prejudice happens to everyone in different forms. Um, um, so I think that was really powerful for me. And so what I got out of it was, I think being able to, like I said before, listen to people and, and let them know that they're being heard. And, but specifically being able to empathize with people's um, experiences so we can have a more um, uh, empathetic society, I guess, and just be, and be there for each other, um, kind of expand what we built in that little bubble witness theater and, and bring it out because I think that's super duper important. It's really important um, for, for the person who is speaking and for the person who is listening. Um, and I think empathy is the most important thing. And that's why it was, it, it's so um, intertwined with theater because theater is such an empathetic art form. Um, all art, 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 but theater is really one rooted in empathy. What do you say to those who say the Holocaust never happened? <sighs> um, wow, what would I say? I've never, I've actually, I've never met someone who said that before, but I've, I've heard stories of, of that. Um, I think, I don't know what I would say to someone who, who said, I think I would just, um, I, I, I think that it's hard because I think that you can only, um, with education, it's tricky. And I think we talked about this before in the other, um, when we were, we were talking as a group, I think that like, you can, you can only say so much because you also, especially as someone with, um, my, my tribe <laughs> has um, a connection to the Holocaust. And so I think that um, I don't want, I, I, can't, I can't talk for the entire group of people, right? And I can't speak for them. And I also, even, even when, um, and I think that's true for anybody who's gone through a similar uh, um, a experience and has ties to a certain group of people who have gone through similar experiences for anything, not just um, that's uh, race or religion, right? Um, it's hard, you can't really, speak on behalf of them for your, you know, as yourself, but I think you can, you can, you can say as much as you can, and then you have to let that person go on their own journey of discovery, because ultimately, um, it's theirs, it's theirs to discover. Um, I don't really know if that fully answered your question, and, I, and it's kind of hard for me to imagine, I'm trying to think about it right now, of what I would say to someone in that situation, but that's kind of the thought that I had. Eve, what do you uh, what do you remember most about this program? You've been doing this for how many? How long? Um, so I've part I've been the program director for five years, and I've had the five opportunity years. to be in um, two groups a year. I participate as one of the staff members. Um, so for me. I think what is most remarkable about the program are, um, and this is something that the audience sees in part because they're witnessing these stories of survival, but they're also seeing the relationships on stage. Um, but I think that the thing that is most incredible are the connections that are formed. Um, and it's what's so unique about this program because I think, I think Rafaela mentioned this earlier that she will carry these stories in her heart with her for the rest of her life. And I think that's what's so unique about this program is that it becomes very personal for the people engaged, for the students engaged. Um, you know, as Sam said, he's not just speaking to the students one time, but he gets to know them. He really got to know each of these three students and the other students who were involved in the program. I think the other unique thing about it is that it's a group process. So it's not just individual students interviewing and speaking with individual survivors, that it's really this group uh, sharing the stories and responding to the stories together and learning together and exploring these issues of discrimination, of, of trauma, um, of resilience together. Very good. Well, I thank you all very much. My name is Stuart Ain, and uh, this has been a fascinating, fast half hour and program about self-help, Holocaust survivor program called Witness Theater. I'm Stuart Ain. Until next week, have a good one.